Hello, I'm Dr. M, this is VMC. Today we have been asked to discuss how in Norway the English Bulldog and the King Charles Cavalier Spaniel are now illegal to continue to breed. Um, let's talk about why that decision's been made. I'll even go into a little bit about what I think about it and I hope that you'll join me. You'll learn something today. Let's talk about the English Bulldog first. So I did touch on this briefly in my video in the ethical breeding series where I discussed fad dogs and brachycephalic dogs. Now this breed is part of the brachycephalic family, meaning that they have a short muzzle. And with that muzzle and that head shape, there comes a number of different problems for the English Bulldog. These dogs are actually unable, in the vast majority of cases, to deliver their puppies without a C-section. This is because the skull of the dog is so big that it cannot pass through the pelvic canal and therefore the dog cannot deliver those puppies. And so we have to consider the ethics of forcing multiple surgeries on a dog as a C-section after we have bred them. This does cause a significant amount of pain and recovery time to the mom. There are also concerns about how they struggle to breathe all the time, all the time, every single breath for their entire lives. This is because they are prone to something called brachycephalic airway syndrome. Now this syndrome is composed of a few different components. They will often have a hypoplastic trachea, meaning their breathing tube is too narrow for the size of the animal that they are. They will have stenotic nares, meaning their nostrils are pinched closed. It's like they're trying to breathe through a stuffed nose all the time and they can't get enough airflow in. They will also often have a long, soft palate. This means that where their larynx is, they do not have a nice clean opening and passageway for the air to get into their lungs. With the effort that goes into their breathing, this often everts some saccules that are in the throat and the force actually causes those tissues instead of being a pouch to pop out and to further occlude the airway. And this just makes the breathing problem that much worse. Truly, from an ethical standpoint, from an animal welfare standpoint, simply being able to breathe and comfortably breathe in a way that allows for a good quality of life is like bare basic quality of life sort of a, a standard to meet. And the fact is that these dogs don't meet that standard and that's why I do not support breeding brachycephalic dogs as they currently are. These dogs also have so many skin problems. And these skin problems are multifactorial. A lot of their skin issues are allergy related. These dogs current commonly have flea allergies, food allergies, environment allergies, or all of the above. They have skin issues so commonly. They itch all the time. And then on top of that, they have all these wrinkles. And in those wrinkles, they often get infections because there's too much moisture in there. And they are unable to keep these areas clean enough. And this contributes to them having a very poor quality of life. It is miserable to be itchy and have infected skin and have weeping skin and have painful skin all the time. They also have really awful joints. There's literally not a single body system on the English Bulldog that is working well. And as a result, these dogs do not have a good quality of life. And then a few years ago, a study came out where a bunch of researchers looked at the genetic pool of English Bulldogs that are currently a lot. And from this paper, they concluded that there is such little diversity in the English Bulldog genetic pool as it currently exists, that it is not possible to improve the breed 
keeping it purely English Bulldogs. We have wrecked this breed by going for this extreme look. And as a result, this is why the English Bulldog is one of the breeds that is currently being banned from breeding. And it makes a lot of sense. I think that other countries need to also step up on this. Veterinarians should be leading the charge here as far as ethics of animal welfare. This is in veterinarians' wheelhouse. We know how much these dogs suffer. We see it all the time. And trying to educate people who are not in the veterinary field about it isn't working. Judges, in dog confirmation shows are still picking these extreme body types to win classes, which is just driving the breeders who like the breed to breed for more and more and more extreme body types, which is worsening all of the issues that the breed has. At this point, it appears the only way to remedy this will be to outcross the English Bulldog so that we can get more genetic diversity into the breeding pool and so that we can start breeding for dogs that can breathe. Let's start there. We need to be breeding for dogs who can live happy lives where they can do dog things and are able to tolerate simple things like heat and running and sleeping in any position they want. There are so many bulldogs and other brachycephalic dogs that end up sleeping, resting their head on a pillow or on a toy, or they'll sleep kind of sitting upright. This isn't cute, this isn't quirky. These dogs are doing this because they literally can't breathe otherwise. It is a devastating cry for help from them and to support these dogs as they are is not appropriate. And I am very glad that at least one country is saying, hey, this is not okay. We need to change it. Now, I do have to admit that when the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel was named as the second breed that had been banned, I was initially a bit surprised. And I do wonder if there's a bit of a difference in commonality of breed, say where I am practicing versus in Norway. But then I did some looking into it. What I did not realize was the extremely high prevalence of something called Chieri-like malformation. Now, when you look at the Cavalier, they have a short muzzle and then a very like bulbous head and then a beautiful spaniel type body. And what's happened is there is now a mismatch to the amount of brain material that needs to fit into a skull that has been bred to be too small. Cerebellum and or brainstem herniate out of the skull. And depending on what study you look at, the incidence of this Chieri malformation is extremely high, like in the 90% range. This is an exceptionally high percentage of these dogs that has this malformation. And this is a huge problem. This malformation predisposes the dog to developing syringomyelia. 70% of the dogs had SM by the time that they were six years of age. This malformation developing into SM will cause head pain, neck pain, ataxia, which is in coordination. It can also cause severe nerve pain, among other issues. This is something that horrifically affects quality of life, and it is not appropriate to keep breeding dogs when essentially all of the population starts out with the Chieri-like malformation. On top of their neurological issues, we also know that they have eye the problems and serious heart disease problems, and also a lot of them do have issues with their ears and allergy problems. And so I, after looking into it further, understand why Norway has decided this is not appropriate to keep breeding the dog as it is. And the only way to help these dogs will be with outbreeding to different breeds. Um, you need to increase the genetic diversity within the pool of dogs in order to start getting some dogs that do not have these heart issues and brain issues 
so that you can start getting dogs that are healthy, that can have a good quality of life, which is what they deserve. As veterinarians, we should be on the forefront of advocating for their welfare. And so I fully support what Norway has done here. Now, from what I understand, this decision took over a decade to make, and it involved a lot of people who truly are experts in the field. There were veterinarians involved, there were geneticists involved, and this was not done lightly. And I really hope that dog show judges step up and start rewarding individual dogs that are functional, more healthy, can breathe, and that are not such extreme body types. That's what we need. If you're looking for additional information on questions to ask and how to find a responsible and ethical breeder, please watch this video series that I did on this topic. I'll link part one up here and I'll put all of the links in the doobly-doo below. I would love to hear from you if you have questions or if you have future video topic ideas, comment them down below, like the video if you've learned something today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.